Okay, so Brave Browser has removed a more perhaps hardcore privacy and security feature, which people are talking about right now. Just before we get into it, I'm gonna break down the story, the feature they're removing, how it impacts you, and if you're a Brave user, what you should be expecting, as well as giving my personal insight and kind of a small debate about this. So let's get into it. Inside your Brave Browser, which is where this is taking place right now, as you can see, if you uh, search in your settings for strict, you're gonna see this option here to block fingerprinting. And you have three options, which is disabled, standard, and strict. So right now you should still see all three of these options but essentially what's happened now is brave has decided to remove the strict option now for those who don't know what fingerprinting is fingerprinting i'm going to keep this as brief as possible is essentially what sites do to try to track you by your uniqueness so let's say you have one extra extension or you uh, customize your browser in a specific way or um, you have it on a certain device or you have a certain system font or a setting those little things can be unique enough to theoretically track you across the internet. Now it is a little bit more of a vague attack in the sense of I still personally haven't seen a lot of convincing research articles that show just exactly how prevalent it is, but it's still definitely something that almost every privacy browser nowadays incorporates. In fact, if you check out privacytests.org, which by the way, I haven't checked the site in a while and it's so cool to see how many more green checks there are. I'm sure I'm the developer who I interviewed is happy about that too, but you're going to see a lot of these actually have to do with fingerprinting. And these are all different things that can't possibly be observed about your browser in order to further track you down the road. So um, that's a little bit of, of a primer, very simplified primer to fingerprinting. So I'm going to read off exactly what Brave said. And this is from our forum. If you want to see the link to this, uh, there's a whole thread discussion, which I'll talk about in a sec. But um, all of this is linked in the description. Brave offers two levels of fingerprint resistance, which we talked about, standard mode and strict mode. They have now observed significant disadvantages of strict mode. And I'm going to detail what they are. One, in order to block fingerprintable APIs, strict mode frequently causes certain websites to function incorrectly or not at all. This website breakage means that strict mode has limited utility for most web users. I will say, like I said, I have used it for a long time and I haven't really had that experience. I definitely have had a couple sites that didn't work well or like a feature was broken, but this has not been a common experience on my end. But that's just sharing my personal thought. I'll talk more about my personal stuff later. Second reason is fewer than 0.5% of Brave users are even using this mode in the first place. The third one is this tiny cohort of users, since there's not enough of them, could actually be ironically more fingerprinted because sites can recognize if you are using strict mode, which is actually something very similar that we saw with lockdown mode on iOS devices, which is... Lockdown mode, yes, is a great privacy and security improvement in a lot of different capacities, but also sites could recognize if you had lockdown enabled. So from a fingerprinting resistance perspective, that was one issue with lockdown mode. I will still say, I think overall it was still worth and it still is worth enabling lockdown mode for people who need it. And the fourth one is uh, pretty much, uh, they just don't want to take away engineers time. Um, and they have limited time and bandwidth. And because there's not many users, it's assumed that they don't want to put much time into it. And for the record, um, some people put uh, like summaries and stuff on our forum. But if you actually read the post that this is that's like pretty much it. Like they give a little bit of context beforehand and they don't really say anything thing meaningful after outside of like it's still good enough, which I think is valid, by the way. So in their actual blog article, they do put that like by default in standard mode, Brave does compete very well, which is true. And so that's the situation. So just to quickly recap that strict mode is still there in your browser, but they have said that they're sunsetting it. So don't expect it to be around forever. And we're seeing two different takes here, which I'm about to go into. Um, but yeah, why don't I actually, I'm going to just go into that. I think I made everything pretty clear. So there's kind of two camps I'm seeing and not just on our forum, but even some people replied on Mastodon and stuff like that. Um, pretty much what we're seeing is people being like, yeah, you know, Brave has limited resources and um, it seems like they don't see the user base to really justify this. And for them, it makes sense. And we're not too upset about this. There definitely are people fighting back on this a little bit. So actually XC3, who's one of our regulars on our forum, did even say um, it could be a bit of a fallacy. Perhaps I wouldn't call it a fallacy, but I'd I also agree in that it's a bit simplified to say that like anti fingerprinting protection has to be in itself uh, counterproductive to fingerprint resistance because as they pointed out using Tor browser and Molvad browser for anti fingerprinting would like if this was the case and what they were saying it would be counterproductive which we haven't really seen and it seems like Molvad and Tor browser which we'll talk about later actually have some very strong fingerprint resistance. It does seem like everyone is kind of on the same page myself included though that really the real reason they stopped this is for 
the engineering time. They don't want to put more time into this feature. It's probably taxing them a lot. And the breakage is like not as big of a deal as they're making it out to be, at least as far as I can tell and what other people are saying here. And also a very valid point that people are bringing up is that people who enable strict mode, which is not a default option and not something you're just going to stumble on, um, are probably also people who disable telemetry. So that's a very valid point. And so that fewer than 0.5% of Brave users using this feature stat is probably a little bit inaccurate. I know I'm one of those people. This is one of those people. And so I wouldn't be surprised if there's at least a small bump. I don't think it's significant. I don't think it's going to go to 50% of Brave users are using strict fingerprint protection. But who knows, maybe it could be closer to 1%. We don't really know. I'm going to go into personal insight time now that I've kind of broken down the situation and then also especially what it means for you i'm not really upset about this i i mean i am a tiny bit because i use this feature and personally i i prefer having that stronger fingerprint resistance but i completely understand where they come from i'm not like angry about it but I kind of wish it was still there. So I'm a little conflicted. It's not the kind of thing where I'm like, oh, this is a huge deal. We need to freak out over this. Um, but it is something that's still worth talking about. And I think it's also worth, actually for me, a really cool thing that got brought up from this is the importance of telemetrics. Um, because I'm generally someone who, of course, doesn't believe in telemetry, but we're starting to see more and more people um, come out with genuinely privacy reserving telemetry. And part of me thinks if I kept my telemetry enabled, as did many other people, would this been a more would this have been a more valued feature on the brave team i don't know is that my responsibility i don't know i'm kind of just like these are kind of thoughts that i'm juggling within my head right now ultimately though i think it is kind of a bummer but also where i'm really going with this is i don't think you should have been using brave with strict mode enabled if fingerprint resistance was like your number one thing um i think that there have been consistently better options now for a while which in my book are definitely tor browser like tor browser should be the browser you use if you're trying to um pretty much do everything you can against fingerprinting and now we even have kind of a not tor tor browser which also performs really well which is mulvad browser and so I, I don't know. I, I don't want to make assumptions as to what the Brave team is doing, but I, I do wonder too if Brave went, hey, we already have these other options now. People who want better fingerprint resistance can go with those. And also, I can't really fault Brave because they're kind of, they have a very valid point in that standard mode is better than other browsers. And I think Brave's target audience is not, you know, extreme privacy and security people. Their target audience is more of a mainstream crowd who wants to care more about privacy and security. And I think this actually falls very in line with their target audience. So I think it makes sense why they're disabling the strict mode. I think it makes sense that it's probably not really about site breakage and it's more about engineering resources but i think that actually aligns with what they're going for their target audience and how most people probably are going to get a significant protection boost by using brave in comparison to other browsers just in standard mode now that i'm done with personal analysis uh when it comes to everybody here this is definitely not a reason to like hop off of brave if you already have a use case for it and it's a browser you enjoy unless you're again your sole use case for brave was dependent on strict mode which i personally could not attest to nor can i imagine who that would be because again i think if strict mode was a requirement for your brave browser usage you'd be using something else which i think speaks to why yeah that maybe this is kind of a needless feature maybe but i am still upset it's gone so i'm conflicted about it but either way when it comes to all of you um if you're already on brave just expect that to be downgraded to standard mode at some point and just know that you're still getting pretty good protection which is how i'd look at brave you're just getting pretty good protection out of the box and if you want more you have better options and just to throw other options your way um which i'm always going to do um, I really would look at Firefox, you can look at LibreWolf, Mulvad, and Tor Browser are kind of my favorites for people to take a look at. Also, this is the kind of thing that like has already been low-key pretty darn discussed within an eight-hour window on our forum by the, at the time I'm recording this. So if you want to stay up to date with this kind of stuff and have a community to chat about it and share your thoughts, or if you have more questions, I really would direct those towards the forum. And it's not just about this. There's a ton of other great discussions going on in the forum right now. Um, and I think that there's just, there's just wonderful stuff going on there. So if you really want to be part of a privacy and security community that's more about like, you know, real discussions about things to help things out for you, definitely check out the forum down below. Um, and aside from that, check out our Patreon as well, patreon.com slash techlore. Um, it's really helping us out with this content um, and it allows us to be, remain independent and make really fast videos like this sometimes. Not the best with videos, but um, this one is a quick one that I was able to rush out. So again, thank you all for watching and thank you to our patrons. Join our Patreon down below, join our forum down below, and I'll see you all next time on Techlore. Peace out.